Hi, I'm attorney Skip Reynolds with Skipton Law, estate planning and elder law here in Centennial, Colorado. And on today's video, I want to talk a little bit about guardianships and conservatorships here in Colorado for at-risk adults. See, a guardian is for your health. So they're who's making your health care decisions if and or when you cannot make them and you have no document in place, whether it's a health care proxy, health care power of attorney, whatever it might be, appointing someone of your choosing to make those medical decisions for you. And then on the flip side, the conservatorship is someone who's empowered by the court to manage your funds, manage your accounts, wherever they might be, pay your bills, deal with your house, your cars, etc. Appointed by the court, again, because there was no general or financial power of attorney granting someone the authority to manage those funds. Or if you have joint ownership with someone that they can use those accounts to pay your bills. But if they need to make large transactions, such as sell a house that's jointly owned, this type of conservatorship might be necessary. So the number one reason that a conservatorship or a guardianship is necessary is because an individual is no longer deemed capable of managing their own decisions and making their own decisions for themselves regarding their health or their finances. But there's a second prerequisite and that second prerequisite I alluded to a minute ago. They no longer have the capacity, but they have not named someone to step into that capacity for them. This is generally done by a power of attorney, whether it be a medical power of attorney or a financial power of attorney. So if you don't have those documents and you're no longer capable, or maybe you're making rash decisions and we need to get into the court to stop you from making those uh, rash decisions, such as giving away your money, those kinds of things. But a guardianship or a conservatorship is a court proceeding. So there's not just paperwork that has to be filed with the court in order to get someone appointed. It also here in Colorado, at a minimum, includes a hearing, even if it's uncontested by whether it be the person who we're trying to get um, custody over or, or power over or other family members. If it's not being contested, we still have to have a hearing. We still have to go in front of a judge or a magistrate and we have to explain why this is necessary. We have to explain what we're going to be doing. We need to have uh, someone come in what they call a court visitor. They have to go visit the person that we're trying to gain these powers over and then report back to the court. And even in a slam dunk, husband for wife, wife for husband, uh, only child for parent, those kinds of situations, we still must go through this process. But in the event that it is contested, such as the person we call the ward is not wanting this or doesn't feel it's necessary, whether they really understand what's going on or not, they have the ability to object. Or if someone else objects, or maybe there's multiple family members trying to become empowered to take care of mom and or dad. See, because kids never fight over power, right? So this is when a guardianship or a conservatorship becomes potentially necessary. But one of the issues that we see is beyond just the court proceedings, beyond the fact that they didn't do a power of attorney, is we have people that we meet with that are what I'll call an orphaned adult. What that means is they don't have any natural family that they would want to have empowered. Or maybe they are unmarried or have no children or didn't have siblings or don't have close relationships with their family. They don't have anybody to step into these roles. And if they haven't done a power of attorney, we're stuck trying to figure out who should be empowered. And sometimes we have to go grasping for straws as to who that might be. Or it could be a public fiduciary. It could be somebody that's appointed by the court, such as uh, someone who acts in this capacity as a guardian for people or uh, companies that are, I'll call it trust companies that act in the fiduciary capacity on the financial side. But you have no power in choosing who this is going to be, whether it's someone in your family or outside the family, whatever your circumstance may be, because you didn't take the opportunity to do a power of attorney. So when we get into these guardianships and we get into these conservatorships, we lose some level of control over 
who's appointed. We also lose control over what powers they have, what powers they have to go and ask the court in order to do, such as oftentimes we need to ask the court to sell real estate before we can actually sell it to ensure that this is actually being done for the benefit of the individual. And, and in addition to that, that the price of the property is appropriate for being sold. Nobody, we aren't giving somebody a discount, which would by and by hurt the individual who are acting for. But we also have to report back every single year. We must report back on multiple page documents, what's going on with the accounts, what's going on with their health, why is this still necessary. We may have to explain why expenditures have changed drastically, or if we're having to change the way we're going to be spending money, we may have to file something changing that with the court so they're aware that this is going to happen. And oh, by the way, even after someone passes away, it's not as easy as just telling the court they passed away. We still have to file paperwork with the court. We may have to file a final report to the court and all of the interested parties of that individual. These proceedings are very powerful. They are very cumbersome and they take a lot of time and effort, even by the individual appointed to act on their behalf. And it's all because they didn't take the opportunity of doing a power of attorney. That's what pushes us into these guardianships and conservatorships most frequently. So if you like that content or you want to hear other content regarding estate planning, whether it be more on powers of attorney, for example, or wills or trusts, or how do I protect my assets after I die for my children or my spouse, or even during my lifetime, if I got sick and had to go to the nursing home. You can find more of these on our channel here. You can click like if you like this content or any other content or hit subscribe so you can be a subscriber and see new content as we produce it. In addition to that, we do bi-monthly workshops here in Colorado available to anybody. All you have to do to sign up if you want to is you can go to our website, which is skiptonlaw.com or and then on there you click on the workshop tab and you can sign up there or you can call our office at 720-440-2774 and we'll get you signed up there as well so hopefully you like this content appreciate you joining me and look forward to seeing you soon take care everybody